it appears and it feels to me from my perspective that this is more of, of a personal agenda than, um, than, than government policy. And so um, I really felt that, um, that we watered down a policy that was there to protect children. I am very, um, I guess, uh, convinced that there's a role for parents in, child's, uh, in, in children's upbringing. And, um, and I do believe if it, it, if it comes down to an election, I guess uh, then I'd be prepared to, to go in that direction. New Brunswick's Blaine Higgs could be teetering on the edge of an election, as you heard there, after a policy change prompted a caucus revolt and lost him a cabinet minister. The premier forced changes to the province's LGBTQ2S plus policy in schools that means students under 16 will need parental consent if they want to change their pronouns or their name. Let's bring back the front bench to unpack the fallout. Brian Gallant, Kate Harrison, Tom Mulcair, and Rob Benzie. Got to start with Brian, who was the premier prior to Blaine Higgs. So convenient that we have you on our panel tonight. Do you think that the current premier would be successful if he faced the electorate on this issue? Well, let me start off by, I, I, by saying I strongly oppose the policy change that Higgs has put into place. And to your question, it has been published that New Brunswickers through a poll, uh, the majority of New Brunswickers through a poll support the Higgs position on this matter. And, and I think that's unfortunate. The question in that poll was given without any explanation on what would uh, any explanation or any try, any attempt of informing the people uh, answering that uh, what would happen to students with this policy? What would it mean for them? What impact would this would have uh, potentially on, on students across the, the province? And I think had that been done, the poll would have been different. Um, further, the last point, I think it's unfortunate. I mean, yes, of course, this is a political panel, but leaders should be using their privileged position to, to raise awareness about why minorities need rights and protections and not use them for electoral gain. And, and Premier Higgs may think that this is one in which uh, this is a position that may help him in an, ele in an election, but that should definitely not be the calculation. And, and uh, if he does go to an election soon or when he, if, if and when he does and he's still the leader, the, the idea of focusing on an issue like this is so unfortunate. He, he, he's defined himself as a fiscal hawk. He should focus on that. He, he should leave the rights and, and protections of minorities alone. He doesn't understand them or doesn't respect them or doesn't uh, want to implement them. So he should just leave those alone and talk about his sort of fiscal uh, record and the things that he wants to do for the economy. And, and since he either doesn't care or understand these issues, I would like on this issue to have him be challenged to name the experts and the stakeholders he's consulted and that told him that this policy change is a good idea. And I think the lack of names or the types of organizations he would name would tell us a lot. Well, further to that, Rob, I mean, I spent about seven minutes of that interview asking for the evidence that supports his position, right? He's claiming that parents have come forward and framing this as a parental rights issue. Many, he kept using the word many, but every piece of evidence he provided was anecdotal, right? There is no proof that 2,000 people, for example, came forward and said, I have an issue with this. In fact, the only proof that exists is what their, the province's child and youth advocate said, which was that he was, the government turned over a total of three complaints to him. Yeah, I, I thought, you, and you pressed him pretty hard on, on that, Bashi, and I, don't, I, I wasn't satisfied with his answers just watching as an observer. Um, this is, and, and, and given that it's, it's causing a caucus mutiny, a cabinet mutiny, I would have thought that if I'm uh, Premier Higgs, I'd be looking at, at the people closest to me saying, is this where we want to go? Um, what happens if a child harms themselves because of this change to, in policy? I mean, as to your point, as you made the point to the Premier, there are some kids who can't be, go to their parents and say, this is who I really am. And that's a really tough situation. These are obviously delicate conversations, but we're talking about the safety of children. And I think... I think if, if, if to, to, to Brian's point, the premier is looking at polling, well, you can get polls to say just about anything. If you frame the poll in, 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 with more context in it, I have a feeling that New Brunswickers would come up with a different response. I think the key, though, Tom, is that the context for Blaine Higgs and the context for many American politicians where we've seen this play out as well is, is being presented as parental rights. And if you tell any parent, don't you want to know what's, what's going on in your kid's life? Of course they're going to be sympathetic to that position. If you frame it as at the expense of what, that's, that's where maybe a different analysis takes place. Yeah, and I'll go to the same place as Rob uh, during that excellent interview that you had, Vashi, because you drilled down on that question. Well, how many cases, is this a real thing or is it, to use Aaron O'Toole's uh, expression when he stepped down, is it politics by algorithm? Meaning 
have you just been measuring public opinion and playing to the lowest common denominator? Have you looked at the number of people who might feel uncomfortable with this and you're talking to them for purely partisan political purposes? And that's the new low in politics. I don't doubt, frankly, having heard him, that there are some parts of Lane Higgs' father and grandfather, as he described himself, where he feels that. But at the same time, I like Brian's point. We're talking about rights here. We're talking about kids who will already feel the sting of discrimination, isolation. They've got enough on their plate. And to have the government saying, oh, by the way, we're going to make life even more difficult for you and we're going to come up with new rules, that's where members of the Conservative Caucus and the Conservative Cabinet of New Brunswick have stood on a question of principle, and that's so rare, and said, I want nothing to do with this. I, I know what you're up to, and I'm not going to play this game. So Higgs says she doesn't really want an election, but I kind of get the feeling he doesn't mind an election. But if this is the defining yeah. moment, I think that you'll find out that the people of New Brunswick are not the people that he thought he had from that focus group, from that algorithm. Well, it will be interesting to see, uh, Kate, because everyone's point, I mean, he does not seem bothered at all by the fact that there could be an election on this issue very specifically. He seems prepared to go to the electorate on it. And he almost shrugged off, like I was saying to him in the interview, if I was covering this anywhere else and six cabinet members, ministers walked out and said, I don't agree with the prime minister, my goodness, that would be a big deal and would call into question his leadership. He's like, well, the majority decided that I was right, so it's not the end of the world. Yeah, and is there anything more emblematic of a power play than six cabinet ministers trying to, walking out, you know, basically calling on the leader to step aside, uh, but not necessarily wanting to go so far as to force an election? The interview you had yesterday with the deputy leader, she said she didn't want an election, right? So I do think that there is a lot of other context here in New Brunswick that is absent from this discussion. Put policy 713 aside for a second. You've had this same group of ministers kind of complaining about mm -hmm. Higgs style of leadership for some time. And it's hard not to get the sense in some of the interviews and the correspondence dating back to a couple of years ago now that this is also a bit of sour grapes for some disgruntled members of the caucus. Maybe it's legitimate, maybe it's not, but I think it's an important piece of context when you're looking at who is complaining. Clearly Higgs has made the calculation. He doesn't need, the, need those people in order to win the next election. And I think, you know, there, there's a very strong case that if he were to go to voters, he would be reelected, including with support for this policy. Yeah, I guess the big question is whether or not that actually ends up happening, if there's going to be an election. Boy, are we going to be glad to have Brian with us for, <laughs> for commentary then. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate the front bench uh, tonight. Kate Harrison, Brian Gallant, Tom Mulcair, and Rob Benzi.